Thanks, Mr. C. Oh. What a beautiful tree. Come on, just wait till we're done decorating. Yeah, in about three months. <laughs> Elizabeth, I think you remember Gina DeMott. Gina, you remember Miss Peel? Yes, Miss Peel, of course. How are you? Hello, Gina. Uh, Dad, can I... Uh, uh, Eden, I talk to you alone for a few minutes? Yeah. Well, what about? <laughs> well, we talked about it right here. We might as well tell everybody about it, huh? Oh, oh it's... Uh, one of those mysterious Christmas conversations? Yeah, something like that. Oh, yeah. yeah, we won't take you away long. All right. Ladies, would you excuse us for a moment? Of course. This looks wonderful. Oh, glad you like it. There is something that I wanted to say to you two without anybody else around. I think it's very important that we all stick together in the face of everything that's confronting us these days. I'm speaking particularly about what Lionel Lockridge may come up with on that confounded ship. The whole family might come under fire, and I want us all to be very strong. Well, that's really what we wanted to talk to you about, Dad. Our family's not sticking together. What do you mean, honey? Well, what's happening between you and Kelly and Mason? Yeah, we don't understand why Mason moved out of the house. I mean, what is going on between you two? And, and Mason says he's cut out of Capital Enterprises? Yes, that's true. But it goes even further than that. I've disinherited him totally. So you really have? You're kidding! <sighs> Dad, how could you do a thing like that? I mean, what could have happened to make you do something this terrible? It's something that I don't want to go into tonight, Ted. Well, go on, Dad. Why don't you tell him the rest of the story? Mason was in the room at the time when Channing was killed. Now, I haven't had a chance to verify that with Peter myself, but that's what he told Kelly. And let me add this. Peter thought that he was dying, so I don't think he would lie at a time like that. Mason? It's true that that's what Peter told Kelly, but Peter was lying. I didn't expect you to admit it. Well, don't stop now, Dad. Go on and tell him the rest of it. Tell him all your theories about what happened that day. I can't believe you were there. If you were there, why didn't you say something? Is that about... true? I just said that it wasn't. Go ahead, Dad. Why don't you tell him the whole story? All right. Just remember, you're forcing this issue. I believe it was possible that Mason killed Channing. Teddy. What? Well, thank you at least for sounding shocked. Dad accepted it very calmly. I did not accept it calmly. You know damn well I didn't. My God, Dad. I don't believe this. Kelly believed it. Mason, did you? Dad, does it, does it make you happy to do this to me? You asked for it. You wanted them to hear all of it? Here's the rest. I think that Mason tried to kill Peter Flint in the hospital. Peter Flint is the eyewitness to Mason's killing Channing. Attaboy, Dad. Keep going. You're doing just swell. And I also have the facts that he has abducted Peter out of the hospital and is holding him hostage somewhere right now. Somewhere he will not tell us. You are? I have him in protective custody for his own safety. Joe Perkins was in prison all these years and you knew he was innocent? Mason, I can't believe this. Can you guess who's getting my share of the inheritance? Who cares, Mason? Now tell us the truth. Ted. I promise you that within the next few days, Peter Flynn is going to make a full statement in which he's going to tell the full truth to everyone, including our father. And then you and Kelly are going to find out just how wrong you were to make these judgments against me. I'm glad Ted and Eden were here to hear these accusations for themselves. I don't think they would have believed me if I'd told them. It's a good lesson for them. Let this be a warning to you two. Our father on the flimsiest of evidence, is capable of turning against any one of us. He's a closed-minded tyrant without a shred of compassion or an ounce of faith in anybody. He hasn't decided this on the basis of any evidence, but on the word of one man who tried to gun down another man in cold blood, a man who was a male whore and whose real name we don't even know. I told you I wanted you out of here, and I'm not going to tell you again. Now collect your belongings and get out and stay away from the rest of us. I swear to you both, I'm innocent. I hope you'll both keep open minds and believe in me until I'm proven guilty by something other than hearsay. In other words, I hope you're kinder to me than our father has been. Listen, if he thinks that you're guilty... All I'm asking is that you give me the benefit of the doubt. There are many times when you've lied to me, Mason. Never about anything important. Maybe not important to you, but important to me. So that's your answer, then. What about you, Ted? It doesn't matter what Ted thinks. Ted's opinion matters to me. I don't know what my opinion is. Hey, look, it doesn't matter yelling at each other. It's not going to do any good. 
I'll get it. 